Hey, welcome to Cheaper Jeeper TV. In this week's episode, we're gonna do a review, a pros and cons, as it were, of the Cheaper Jeeper TV camping setup. We're gonna look at the gear, talk about what works, what doesn't work, and we're doing it in Forillon National Park in the province of Quebec in the Gaspé Peninsula. So stick around. What you see behind me now is the Atlantic Ocean just off of the Gaspé Peninsula at Forlon National Park in the province of Quebec. We've been here for about a week now and I've only now brought up the camera because we have just been enjoying this beautiful place. And in this video, I'm gonna show you some of the scenery of Forlon National Park. But before we do that, I just wanna go over with you some of the pros and cons of our camping gear and the setup. It's now been two years of camping out of our Jeep with some of the DIY gear and I thought I'd share with you some of the tips that we have on what's been working for us and what needs improvement. So let's get started. So one tip that I'd like to share with you, I could talk to you about here at the back of the Jeep and that is the use of our pantry box where we store some food. Now here at the park they did mention that there's bears in the park and to keep our food in a secure location. So we keep our food in this pantry box and to access it, all we have to do is take this to our picnic table and we have access to all the food, then we could put it back. But if I just wanna come and get one item, you might remember from the video where I designed and built this chuck box and pantry box that there's these sliding bars that come out, in which case I could simply take the pantry box and sit it on top and work from here. So if I just needed one item and wanted to bring it to the picnic table, I could just grab that item and put it up here on the shelf and then put the pantry box back in place. So that's proven to be very handy so that we don't have to haul the pantry box of food everywhere. You just take what we need and then put it back. Here's another tip. There's the shelf right here where I had this video where I showed how to DIY make the metal brackets to put this shelf. We find this shelf very handy, not only to put items on it like now, but when we're sleeping in the Jeep at night and we're looking for a place maybe to put our cell phones or our chargers or a drink for that matter, this shelf has come in very handy. We're really happy with how functional this is. Now there is this video right here where I talked about the attic storage item right here. That's where we store some blankets, reflectix materials, and when we're traveling, I put the solar panels up there as well. Interestingly, there's this item that I took out of the pantry box, which is something that is a good tip that's worked well for us, because when we have our 12 volt fridge, we wanna make sure we use it efficiently. So we buy these silk milk products that are in Tetra Pak, so they don't need to be refrigerated until it's open. So this isn't occupying any refrigeration space until we need it. Speaking of the refrigerator, let's go have a look at that. What we're looking at here is the Bouge RV 23 quart 12 volt compressor driven fridge. We are super happy with this fridge. It doesn't use up a lot of energy. Our Jackery 500 powers it very effectively and it is ample space for our food products. When we look inside, we have so many items that are able to be stored in here. And as I showed you with that Tetra pack of the almond milk, we use it efficiently by being able to keep some things out of the fridge until they're opened and then they require refrigeration. So for us, 23 quart is the premium size because it's big enough to store a lot of items, but it's small enough that it fits in the Jeep and doesn't take up too much space and it also doesn't use up a lot of energy. Speaking of energy, let's take a look now at the Jackery and the solar panel system that we use to power up our refrigerator when we're camping, as well as charge all of our electronics. Now normally I'd have the solar panels outside in the sun, but anything else like the Jackery or anything that I'm charging off the Jackery like my cell phone or my other rechargeable batteries or my refrigerator, they'd be inside the tent. But I put them out here so you can see how everything works. Over the course of the evening, I'd have these batteries to charge my cell phones or my camera or any other kinds of items that I have. And the Jackery can cover all that through the night and still have lots of battery left over the next day. But during the day, I'd have my solar panel connected to the Jackery, recharging it while it still powers the refrigerator. Now I happen to have two solar panels, so that makes things a little easier. 
but even on one solar panel, the jackery could get topped up during the course of the day. And depending on the day, if there's a little cloud, it might not get topped up, but it would still function through the night to keep your refrigerator going. And hopefully in the next day, you'd have full sun because you want to make sure you keep your batteries topped up as much as possible. But we're pretty happy with this system because it seems to power up everything for us just fine. So this Tasika tent is an item on our camping list that's a bit controversial because you might remember this video here where I posted a not so favorable review in that it doesn't hold up well to heavy use. And I'm disappointed about that because I love this tent for the money it's a really good tent, plus it has these other features that are so fantastic. It's a four screen wall tent that has flaps that come down on all four sides. So it can also be a privacy tent for using a porta potty or for changing or just to give you some privacy from the next campground. So it's very suitable that way. It also is a screen tent that actually has a floor and that's hard to find. The other nice thing about this tent is that it folds down into a nice compact size and fits in the back of the Jeep between the roll bar and the hard top and takes practically no space at all. So in this video when I first talked about this tent, I put a link to where you can purchase it for not too much money. So for the money and for the features you get with this tent, it's fantastic. So to keep using it, I ended up reinforcing the four corners and had the straps re-sewn in so I could keep using this. And then I figure, even after a while, once it gets worn out, I'll just buy another one because it doesn't cost as much as some other tents, but this one has all the features that I can't find in other tents. I know some people commented on some screen rooms that they like to use, but they take up a lot of space when you have to pack it away in your Jeep, where this takes hardly any. So we're really happy with the functionality of this tent and dollar for dollar is probably the best value. Speaking of the tent, another item that we carry around with us as part of our camping gear is a carpet. Yep, you can see this carpet right here and you might remember me packing it in this video here on how I pack my Jeep for camping. I showed that we bring this. It really makes a difference in terms of comfort level in here and even when you're winter camping, it makes a difference then as well. But now let's talk about the chuck box. Okay, in this frame, there's quite a number of items here that I want to talk with you about. You might remember in this video where I discussed the design of this chuck box. Well, this was the second design because the first design that I talked about was very good, except that we found after using it that it was a little bit too awkward and too big. So I needed to size it down a little bit. And I discussed in the video where I designed this chuck box that I designed it around a nice propane stove that I decided to get. Now this is the wood propane stove. It's been awesome. I mean, let me demonstrate how easy this is. And it's on. So simple. In the past, I've used the Coleman stove where you have to pump it up to get the naphtha pressurized to start working. Then you have to remember to keep pumping it up. So it's a bit of a hassle. This is so convenient. And this Woods model has the stainless steel tray in here that helps keep it clean. So we've been using it for two years. Still looks like new, still works great. So I'm very happy with this propane stove, which I designed this chuck box to house. And you can see inside is the frying pan, the plates, and then the cutlery. So it's very handy, lots of shelving, and we use the six-in-one Coleman camping table to set this up onto. And what we find is that when it's windy out or if it's inclement weather out, using this setup inside the Hasika tent seems to work and you can sit down and take your time and you don't get too tired. It's a very comfortable setup. So we're pretty happy with this. And the other thing that I want to talk about is instead of using the one pound propane tanks, which are expensive or maybe a little tricky or dangerous to refill because they're not meant to be refilled, I got the five pound propane tank, which is refillable and very convenient to use. So that's another item that we're pretty happy with, as well as the Adventure Trail gear carrying bag that allows me to strap the propane tank on the outside of the Jeep when I'm driving to the spare tire. So that is a very inexpensive and not permanent option compared to other possibilities where you have to bolt a metal frame to your hardtop and you may not want to do that. So I'm very happy with the Adventure Trail Gear 5-pound propane tank carrying bag. And speaking of carrying bags, 
You might remember this video here where I talked about the saddlebags that you can strap onto your roll bar to carry your clothes when you're camping. Well, my wife really enjoys using these because she finds that's a very efficient way to pack what she wants to bring along for camping and it straps onto the roll bar. Now, for me, it doesn't work as well for me. I don't find it very accessible uh, or it just doesn't suit my way of packing. So I tend to use just a duffel bag and put everything in that way. But the saddlebags for some people is awesome. Now in this corner of the tent is our version of the porta potty. Basically, all I had to do was buy this lid off of Amazon and use a 20 liter pail or five gallon pail that I had at home. And I've got my own porta potty. Now we keep this in the tent and sometimes at night when you have to go and you don't want to go all the way to the comfort station or you're out in the woods, you need somewhere to go. Well, this system seems to work really well in that if in the middle of the night that you have to go, you can go inside the tent and take care of your business and then use compostable bags to bury it. Or if you're at a provincial park, you could discard the contents in the garbage. So when you gotta go, this is a method that's very convenient very comfortable and it doesn't cost a lot of money to set this up. But also speaking of convenient and comfortable, we found this water jug on Amazon and it's really easy to cart the water around because it has a handle here so you could walk around carrying it like a suitcase or this handle as well. Or if you need to tilt it, you've got two places to grab onto, a very large lid in which you could pour the water in or out and it has a turn valve right here to allow you to pour out the water. So we found this to be a very handy water bottle and we're happy with this. And of course you're probably wondering how we feel about the sleeping camping platform and I'm going to get to that. But because of that, we have lots of room underneath for storage and we've gone to these clear plastic tubs to store things in because they keep things together instead of falling all over the place. And because it's a clear plastic, in each one you could see where what you're looking for is. So. This has become a kind of a favorite way for us to store some items and the sleeping camping platform gives us lots of room underneath to store a lot of this, including the back shelf like I mentioned before. Let's now have a look finally at the sleeping camping platform. So as we are about to look inside the Jeep at the sleeping camping platform, I'll just point out these air vents that I made in this video in case you wanted to look at making some for yourself. We're super happy with these because they're a large enough vent that we put on both sides which allows for ample airflow and because they're louvered like this during the rain like we had last night for example the rain doesn't get in so it allows the air to go through and it keeps the rain out and this was not very much money at all to DIY so we're pretty happy with these and now let's talk about the sleeping camping platform well you can see Lenny likes the platform so if it works for a doggy nap I'm sure it'll be fine for anybody else but this has been a great system for us. Let's have a look at it from the back. So this is actually a great place to look at the sleeping camping platform because you can kind of see everything. Here's where the pantry box with food gets stored. The actual chuck box uses this space when we're traveling and it uses 100% of that space underneath the platform here. We got room here for the chairs and the axe and shovel and other things. And just off to the sides is where we store a few other things. If you want to see how I packed everything, there's this video here on how I packed the Jeep for camping. You can check it out. But here you can see the bed on top of the platform. We use a three inch thick high density foam pad, which is super comfortable. We get great night's sleep. And with the vent in the door, like I talked about, there's ample ventilation, but should it be warm, we have a 12 volt USB powered fan here that I plug into the Jackery. And it's a super comfortable spot with some LED lights that we have to light up things if we want to read a book. We could also use the LED lights on the roof of the Jeep as well. And yes, if people are asking, Lenny does sleep in here as well. There, are, When he was younger, there were times he slept up top here, and now he kind of likes to sleep in this space right here. And actually, yes, there is room here for our feet, probably because when you sleep, your feet aren't vertical like that. They tend to be off to the side, but there's also space here for your feet to come up here between the back of this and the rear window. So it is unbelievably comfortable. We're super happy with it. and. 
A lot of subscribers are as well because you'll remember this video here of subscribers who have built their own sleeping camping platform off of this design with a few modifications of their own. So you may want to check that out. Now another item that I bring along when I go camping is a spare bottle of propane. This one pound propane tank fits nicely right here behind my spare tire. So if while I'm cooking and my five pound propane tank should empty, I have this refill right here that I could use to finish my meal and that gives me time to make sure I go refill the five pound tank. So this has been pretty handy. So in all honesty, it's been a week that we've been here. I just brought out the camera now to do the video on the camping equipment because we've been having such an amazing time. And I thought I couldn't just end the video looking at the equipment. You're probably wondering, what is it like in the Gaspé Peninsula? What's it like at Forlon National Park? Well, I'm gonna show you some footage of some scenery and landscapes and trails that we've done. So maybe you might wanna come and check it out as well. Feel free to let me know in the comments section below what you think of Forlon National Park and the Gaspé Peninsula. From Toronto, we pass through Quebec and stay on the south shore of the St. Lawrence River and make our way to the Gaspé Peninsula. And not before too long, we reach the Forlon National Park. The park has campsites on the north area and the south area. We will be staying at Cap Bonami, which is on the north side. The visitor center is quite nice. It has an interpretive center, a store to buy some supplies, also a bistro where you can get some food and some drinks if you're running low by the end of your trip. You can get lots of ideas on what to do when you're visiting the park here. For example, just adjacent to the visitor center is a very easy trail that you could take to visit the De Rosier Lighthouse, which is Canada's tallest lighthouse. You can even go inside and climb all the way to the top. And here's the view from our campsite, campsite number 52. I'd recommend 52, 50, 48, or 46 as they are the most private. And as you can see here, the Jeep is in the shade. And as I walk through the campsite, you'll see the other view that we have from our campsite, which is of the ocean. And when you know it, on the very first morning that we woke up, from this view, we were able to notice whales in the ocean. The campsite is called the Cap Bonami Campsite because it's right next to Cap Bonami Trail. Let's have a look. The campground has these very nice shelters that are great to hang out in if the weather were to be in climate as there's a wood burning stove and a lovely view of the ocean. So just a little further is the Cap Bonami lookout and over my shoulder on the tall cliff is another lookout. I notice a sign next to the interpretation center where there's a schedule for the interpreters. They'll give talks in French as well as English. The trail to the right leads you to the outlook at the top of the cliff. We're going to go left. We are so lucky to have such a beautiful day to observe this scenery and that cliff up there on the left is where the campsite is. And we are going to go hang out down there. The viewfinder is free to observe the birds nesting on the cliffs. This is early July and it's like there's nobody else here. This is awesome.
Wow, this is a very interesting cobblestone beach. You won't find any sandcastles, but it looks like there's some in Nookshucks. Well, Lenny and I just sat and enjoyed the view for a while because we've been here for a week and we could have stayed longer, but it's time to continue with our trip. We continue our trip by heading south on the highway past the community of Gaspé all the way to the community of Percy where we'll find Bonaventure Island and Percy Rock National Park. Percy is a lovely community with many shops and restaurants, a lovely boardwalk, and dare I say, an amazing view. And from that cliff on the left, we got an upfront and personal look at Percy Rock. I could only scratch the surface to share with you the beauty and the wonder of this part of Quebec and the Gaspé Peninsula, but I just thought I'd at least whet your appetite, so maybe you might want to explore this area as well. And speaking of which, we couldn't leave the area without finally having our lobster dinner. And thanks for watching. Hey, that's it for this week's episode of Cheaper Cheaper TV. This week from the Gaspé Peninsula. I hope you found the information of the camping gear helpful and that you found the scenic shots from the Gaspé Peninsula just as nice. If you like the information, please feel free to give the video a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, feel free to hit the subscribe button and the alert bell so you'll be notified when the next video is released. Until next time, we'll over Cheaper Jeeper TV. Be well, stay safe, take care.